All right, so all of this stuff in space helps us understand how our solar system were formed, was formed. Uh, we've got you know the sun, the planets, which we'll talk about later, the asteroid belts. We talked about meteorites, asteroids, comets, the moon, all these different things come together and give us more information so we can develop a better theory on how our solar system formed. This has kind of always been the big question, right? How did we get here and why are we here? Those are kind of the big questions. So if you want to figure out the whole how did we get here thing, you have to take into account physical and chemical compositions of the planets. You have to look at dwarf planets. You have to look at comets. You have to look at asteroids. You have to look at meteorites. You also have to look at extrasolar planets. What? Extrasolar planets? Yeah. Extrasolar planets are planets that orbit a star outside of our solar system. So they have a different sun than we do. Okay. Now, this number keeps changing. Um, but it says 700 here, 800 and counting. And every semester that I teach this, there seems to be another planet that's found out there. All right, so if you're trying to figure out how did we get here, there are certain things you have to take into account. Okay. So 10 important things you have to account for. First one is that planets are isolated in space. What this means is as you get further away from the sun, the distance to the sun gets larger and larger. So the distance between the planets get larger and larger. And you can kind of see that with this picture down here, right? We've got the inners all kind of squished together and then look how far apart each one of the outer ones is. The next thing you gotta keep into consideration is that the planet's orbits even though they are elliptical, are almost circular. They're very, very close to being circular. And there's always exceptions, so you have to account for that, except Mercury. Which, there's a little video that I have when we talk about Mercury. It's kind of mind-blowing. Number three, all of the orbits of the planets are in the same plane as the Sun. They all kind of go from the Sun's equator. Except Mercury. Again, exceptions for everything. Number four, all of the planets orbit the sun in the same direction, counterclockwise. And most of the planets spin the same way, counterclockwise. So we're all orbiting counterclockwise and spinning counterclockwise. Now, kind of interesting that Venus actually spins clockwise. If you look at its tilt, it's... 177 degrees, so basically it's upside down, spinning clockwise. The other interesting one is Uranus. Uranus is 97 degrees, so it's not completely on its side, and it's spinning. Now, not only do the planets orbit the sun counterclockwise and spin counterclockwise, the moons spin with them clockwise. And you have to account for the different planets. And kind of by groups, right? We've got the terrestrial planets, which are the Earth-like ones, the rocky, higher density, um, don't have many moons in this whole category. And then the Jovian, which are your gas giants, your ice planets, um, thick atmospheres, lots of moons. Every single one of them has a ring. So you have to figure out why these four are the same and these four are the same and why they're grouped the way they are. Another thing you have to take into consideration is the asteroids, right? These guys, as we had said, we've dated meteorites, so they're all kind of the same age, four and a half billion years old, made of the same material that the rocky planets are made of, and these guys haven't changed at all. Still the original rock, we think. And then you have to explain the Kuiper Belt. Right? Why this 
huge body of comets are going around in the same plane as everything else, just past Neptune. And then finally, number 10, the Oort cloud. Right. So if you can explain why everything's all spinning the same way and has the same plane and yada yada yada, then comes the kicker. This Oort cloud, it's comets spinning every possible way, not keeping in line with anything else, and kind of like a sphere, a protective sphere of ice around our solar system. So those are the 10 things we have to explain if we're going to explain where we came from. All right, so we know those 10 things. We know the solar system is four and a half billion years old, and we know the universe is 14 billion years old. If you want, you can click on this question. It, it's okay, it's not, not awesome, but...